I was so convinced that by the age of 25, I'd be a multimillionaire. And by the age of 25, I'd achieve those things. But I could have slipped through the net if I had believed the story I was supposed to believe. That if you don't succeed in school, you'll become a failure. 8.30 in the morning in Liverpool. 26-year-old marketing magnate, Stephen, is starting a new job. But it's a job with a difference. He'll be working undercover in a secondary school as a support worker. This year, his global social media marketing business is on track to generate over £100 million. I came from a background where my mum and dad didn't have anything. I went to a state school and even though I sound really posh, I'm definitely not. Keeping his identity under wraps, Stephen has flown over 3,000 miles from his home in New York to Liverpool. After six weeks undercover at Little and High, Stephen, using his middle name Cliff, will offer some students a life-changing opportunity. I want to find a young person that has ambition, but that struggles in school just like I did. Stephen's back, assisting in Year 11 science. How are you? You're right. This side's higher. Do you think oh. it's because there's more coils over the side? Look how many there is there. 15 year old Steve arrives late. Jacket off, please, Stephen. Oh, Just take it off, please. I can't hear. I've got um, ear itis. <laughs> Where are you? Wow. <laughs> Do you know what? I think I've caught something. Can't be bothered itis. Yeah, well, you've had that for a long time. I know. No cure. Everyone who looks at my report thinks I'm nosy. Well, I don't think I'm nosy. I just think I do stupid stuff sometimes. Stephen, no. <laughs> Getting a bit tired of this now. Pass it over, please. Stephen, you don't pass it over, I'll remove you permanently. All right, right, two seconds. You were given one warning. Just go. Stephen does lack self-belief uh, in terms of his academic ability, I think. He doesn't like to admit it, but I think he does struggle. He finds it hard, and he's not the only one. Stephen's straight to work, assisting in a Year 11 history class. 15-year-old Stee we'll is late again. OK. Is that point, evidence, explanation? It's one of them. OK, so which one is it, Stee? Um, point. All right. What do you want to do after you finish school? I promise people I'm going to be rich. So I'll have to. Who have you promised? Uh, me ma. <laughs> she doesn't believe me. I want a security business, and I've got my plan set out. I just need all the money for it. Why security? You get two men right on one door and be like, like a 150 each right, a night for one man right, so that's 300. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pay them like, what, 50 quid a night or something, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'll get like 200 quid off them. Makes sense. There's a... I just have dreams, lads. I want to be a millionaire by 30. I'd probably spend it on a big house, probably my mum's house, if she's all right with me by then, if I haven't been too naughty in school before I'd have a go at me. Paperclip, put your cards away. His attitude then was um, almost identical to my attitude when I was 15 and 16. He's very, very ambitious and he's got big hopes for his future. You know, a lot of people will say they want to be successful and they want to be rich. But the, I think the difference with Steve is he's already making a plan, and I think that is impressive. Another student on Stephen's radar is 15-year-old Steve. This is your English work. Add that to the pile. He's been sent to internal exclusion for the third time this year. Do you think that teachers here think that because you've misbehaved a little bit in school here and there, that you won't achieve great things in your life. Yeah. If I say to them, I'm doing this, I'm mm. going to do that, I'm going to own my own business, mm -hmm. I'm going to make loads of money, I don't think they believe me. But you believe yourself? Yeah. I want to be respected. I want to make a difference. I want to prove them all wrong, no matter what. I say to my mum, I'm going to be a millionaire. She's told everyone that she knows. Oh, yeah. Oh, Steve thinks you're going to be a millionaire. And she says it like, I'm stupid. Like a sarcastic way? Yeah. And I just say to her, you're not getting a house when you're older. Presumably, you want to make her proud, though. Yeah. yeah. That's the only thing I care about. When Steve told me that people don't believe in him, 
it was pretty devastating. In the same sentence he said, but he just knows he's gonna do it anyway. And I think that's the moment that I fell in love with him a little bit because I, uh, I feel you, Steve. With just a couple of days left in Liverpool, Stephen wants to find out more about Steve. Hey, Hello. mate, you all right? Hello. This is Hi, yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Cliff. Hi, yeah. Uh, one of the support Lisa. workers at the school. How are you? All right, thanks. <laughs> From your perspective, what, what's Steve like in school? I think he's quite loud. He likes to be the class clown. Do you worry about that? Do you worry that when, because of his behaviour in school, when he leaves school, he might find it hard. Yeah, if he doesn't get the results and stuff he wants, mm -hmm. then, yeah, of course, he's going to find it hard, isn't mm -hmm. he? It'll be harder, but I reckon I'll still get a job. Your ambitions are quite big, though, aren't they? Still? Yeah. He wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> right. He's going to buy me a house and he's going to look after us all. Speaking completely honestly, do you believe him? No. Isn't. I've told him loads of times. Why we you? all laugh. Really? Why don't you believe it when he says it? <sighs> Cos I wouldn't know what he'd do to get there. Maybe you should go speak to a millionaire about it. I don't think we've found any around here. You don't think there's any millionaires around no. here? <laughs> no. No. There's no get-rich-quick schemes. I know. Mm. Apart from doing the things that the bad kids do. Mm -hmm. Hence drugs, mm. dealing drugs. Speaking honestly, though, do you know people that do that? Yeah. You've been asked to, haven't you? Yeah. You've been asked to, to yeah. deal Not to deal people drugs. from around here, just, like, someone on Instagram. Mess me with like how old are you? Yeah. Well, like what kind of drugs? Like cocaine, like crack cocaine, and and you know what? It's not like I'd go and do it, but if, if it weren't for me, mum, I might have been down up half now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. 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 Thank you. It's pretty alarming that in modern day Britain we have. 15 and 16 year olds. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you later. Being propositioned to sell drugs on social media. You know, this sounds really like a crazy thing to say, being the CEO of a social media company, but I had no idea. It terrifies me. When Stephen returns to Little and High tomorrow, he will no longer be undercover support worker Cliff. There's one more student that Stephen needs to reveal his true identity to. Stephen's arranged for Steve to meet him at his company headquarters in Manchester. Good, because I get out to that end. Steve is the kid that I can relate to the most. Hey, are you seeing? Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of respect for his mum, just like I did. Not the best at school, in the same way I wasn't. But the one thing that Steve does have is unshakable ambition. Hello. Hello. Nice car. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know where you are? No. It's a nice town. Did you like it? Yeah. You must be so confused. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my name isn't Cliff. My name's Stephen. No, it's not. It is. Fully. Fully. So what are you? Rich. A businessman. Yeah. Yeah? This is my business. Is it yours? It is, yeah. So what happens? What do you do? We do marketing for some of the world's biggest brands. So do you own this? Is yeah. this yours? Mm -hmm. Do these all work for you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you a bit of a tour around. So this is the, the jungle. Spaces you can come on your own and just relax. Through here is all of our designers, video design, video editing, um, and animation. So people go up there sometimes just to sleep and to rest. <laughs> this is my dog. It's called Pablo. Are you sure it's called Pablo? No, that's his name, yeah. One of the things you said to me really resonated with me. You said to me that uh, you wanted to be a millionaire, and you told me that no one believed you. And I remember being your age, and saying that to people, and nobody believing me. And this is how it ended for me. And here's the thing, you want to start your own business, right? So I'm going to do something for you. This summer, you're going to spend six weeks with me learning how to run a business so that you can follow in my footsteps. Where are you going? No, no, it's fine. 
<laughs> also, I live and work in New York, so I'll bring you and your mum out to New York, and you can come meet me out there, and you can spend some time with me, understand how the business works. Thank you. Do you think your mum's going to be proud? Yeah. Nothing ever happens like this to, like, me. It's always bad stuff. I reckon it'll make it easier seeing, like, how this is all done to how I do it. And it's, like, just one step closer to me doing the, what I want to do. I look forward to working with you this summer. But I'll probably still be calling him Cliff. Being a Cliff Graham has taught me... Um, I'm getting emotional how kids are, are almost on this like this fence and the experience they have at this age can push them one way or the other over over the fence and uh, the more kids we can push in, in, over the good side of the fence um, the better they'll the better the world will be